The year was 1957. Best-selling cars had tail fins, and Elvis all shook up. That same year, this house made quite a splash. Six years later, the modern had worn off this mid-century, but after months of work, the luster returns. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. See this main roof form? We're just going to pull that forward to it's even where this existing deck is. Definitely says mid-century modern. The money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to a special episode of This Old House. Special because today we give this mid-century modern home back to our homeowners. And Tommy, a lot has happened to this house since nine months ago when we first rolled up to it in a 1957 Chevy. A lot has happened to this house. You know, in the 50s, this house really was pretty basic. It was nothing but a box with a slope roof on it. Basic, but I bet you back in 1957 when this house was built in this neighborhood of otherwise traditional looking homes, that that little box of a house made a pretty big statement. I bet it did, but you know what? It's making a big statement now. I mean, look what we did. We more than doubled the size of it. On that side of the house, we put a master suite with a guest suite down below. And on this side, we added a, a family room, a loft, and a garage down under. Big changes outside and in. Let's have a look. Absolutely. Nice to have a proper entryway for the first time, a place to take your jacket off or your shoes off. Yeah, remember that bench that we built on Ask This Old House on the Build It segment? I do. We actually built that out of one sheet of three-quarter inch MDF. It's a nice gift for our homeowners. Yeah. And man, look at this transformation. What a difference, huh? Boy, what a difference. So when we first got here, the kitchen was tucked back into this corner, nasty little spot. Right. We had a little dividing wall here that made an L shape, and there was a post that went up to support the beam. We had to put a bigger beam up because we wanted to remove that post. Right. And over here where the stairway is, there was a fireplace with a big chimney. We took that out. Yeah, because the original staircase was over there going down half a level. Eventually, we closed it off. I think we had to put a containment system in for the asbestos abatement. Yeah, the guys had to have some place where they could walk in and then walk out, get cleaned up. You don't want to carry any asbestos dust out with you. And now we've got ourselves an eating area back here, the working kitchen, wide open, sleek, modern look, and clear sight lines into right. the addition, which is all of this space right here. Hey, Sunil, hey, Neha. Kevin. Hey, Kevin. How are you? Hey, right. Tommy. Some finishing touches, putting up yeah. the artwork? Yep. Wow, so I hear you are the painter of all the modern art. That's right, I made this at 2 a.m. last night, so. <laughs> I love it. Finishing touches. Yeah. Well, why don't you guys come on down here and tell us what you think of your new home? Sure. Neha, what do you think? Oh, I love it. I mean, this is what we had envisioned. Like, they're small spaces, but their ceilings are high and they're looking out to each other. So it's, it's awesome. I think that's what we wanted. So yeah. great. What, Thank what, you. What you wanted is what we want to hear. So that's good. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I love it as well. I, you know, all the glass and, and modern looks, sleek, sleek lines, no, um, no trim work. Uh, and, and the balcony, that's right. I, I really love the siding. You know, Charlie came up with the idea of putting the horizontal siding on the inside as well. I think it looks really nice. And, and, and there are no houses close by, so it, it's a nice open look on the outside. A lot of engineering to get all this glass well, in. Well, I mean, you've got a glass wall, basically, and you have to make sure that it's supported because we had the roof to support. We have to worry about lateral movement. Mm -hmm. So we fabricated some steel columns and a couple of steel beams to carry all that weight, and that's what you need to do it. And as you say, the siding that Charlie suggested to put on here, this is horizontal yes. for all the new addition to that's contrast right. with the vertical. And we've even got the cable rail system, yeah. which you cleverly used outside as well as in. Yeah, um, nice. And another thing that you did outside and in was your choice of flooring. We've got it out on the balcony as well as in the house. That's right. Um, you know, originally our idea was to um, get poured concrete and like finished concrete, but uh, we were told it would be too heavy. I mean, we could build whatever for the addition, but for the existing house, it would have been too heavy. Right. Uh, so. Um, so we chose this tile, and like now in retrospect, I think it was a very good choice. In fact, 
Might even look better than concrete now. <laughs> well, this tile is actually a porcelain tile meant to look like concrete. It's about three eighths to a half an inch thick, needs a lot of thin set, and it's tricky to make each one even and level. And two guys had to put it down because they're very heavy. So maybe a happy accident, too. Yeah. And Nihai, you asked us for a balcony, and when I heard it, I kind of scratched my head. But now that I see it, I get it. Yeah, I always wanted something like a loft to look over the living space, read a book, snooze, or just, uh, just hang out there. As you say, separate spaces, but still open. Wide open. Beautiful living room. You guys asked for a fireplace. You had a couple things on the list, though. You said right. you wanted something that was floating, and you also knew that you wanted gas. Right. We wanted the convenience of a gas. You know, press a button and it comes on. And, and the floating design was very appealing. But uh, we learned by, you know, looking and, and going to uh, the people who make this is that for, a, for it to be a gas fireplace, it had to be wall-mounted because right. the gas line cannot come from the top. Right. And, and it has to come either from the back or from the bottom. So for it to be floating, this is what uh, we, we picked. An iconic modern look. Yeah, definitely, and it's a lot of work to mount this to the wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, we use steel studs behind the wall, we use fireproof uh, insulation, and we use a cement board and plastered it over it so you don't ever have to worry about a fire. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to see every inch of the house, so I think I'm going to go start with Richard downstairs, and I know you guys are going to check out the upstairs. Yeah, we're going to check up the master suite Let's and see go, what's yeah. going on up there. We'll go to the favorite spot in the house. Okay. <laughs> Let me show you the bedrooms, Tommy. Okay. You know, the stairway we're going up, I think this is the only one in its original location. I think you're right, Tommy. <laughs> These oak wood floors are beautiful. They're white oak. It's an engineered material with a veneer on top. The veneer is nice and thick. So over time, if somebody wants to refinish these floors, someone that knows what they're doing, the floors could probably be refinished four times. Oh, that's good to know. And, and, and remember the bathroom we had here? Oh, I remember the one that they said it was renovated. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it was kind of updated. It wasn't really renovated. And this bathroom shower is huge. The floor is sloped right there, and the drain is underneath that wall. That's right, and, and obviously we're gonna have a glass partition here so we can shower without the water spilling out. Yep. And, and look at this uh, countertop we chose. We used the same material in a different color uh, as the kitchen. Um, and uh, you know, it's porcelain-like, it's thin. Uh, and we also used it for the backsplash. I think it gives it a nice, clean look. It gives it a nice, clean look. It's a man-made product, and it feels like stone. I like the accent lighting in the vanity, and I like the fact that it's floating. You know what you're really going to love? Are these heated floors. Yeah. Now, where the master bedroom is, this is actually part of the new addition. That's right, and, and you know, we, we always wanted uh, high ceilings in the, in the bedroom because it, it isn't that much of floor space, but having the high ceilings, these you know, op opposing roof lines, uh, and a lot of windows bring, bring in a lot of natural light, so I love that about this room. It's bright space, yeah. and you've got a lot of storage right That's here. That's right, you know, initially we, our plan was to get a walk-in closet, and that didn't work out, but, but these, these are beautiful, and they give us a lot of storage, in fact, more than we might even need. Yeah, you got a lot of shelving, you got a lot of drawers, and the units on each side of this unit it, a lot of hanging places. That's right. In this room up here that's now your daughter's room, I remember that there was a big plate glass window here that looked down into the family room. That's right, and, and you know, this used to be the master bedroom despite right. that big glass window looking down. I remember the floor had asbestos in it, the ceiling has asbestos in it, all that had to go. Yeah, exactly, and uh, you know, you remember there used to be a closet here that uh, now we replaced uh, with a bathroom for our daughter. Really nice. And in your daughter's room, they added a little more space with closets and actually more windows. That's right. You know, uh, I think we we probably have over 40 windows now. And, yeah. you know, and this being a busy part of Brookline and, and that being a busy street, we, we need privacy. And, and we've called upon Zach and his team to to install some modern shades for us. Now, these are all custom fit, Zach, right? That's right. Yeah, every single one of these are uh, custom fit. What we do first is we show up at the job site, put up our brackets, and take measurements then to a 16th of an inch. All right, and then what? From there, we can order our fabric so that it fills the whole space of the window. When we come back with our fully cut fabric, we roll them on the tubes and put them right back up like we're doing today. And how are these operated? So these here are all operated with a hardwired motor. It's actually in the tube here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, so these can be uh, controlled uh, with a uh, on-wall keypad, with a handheld remote, or with an app that you can use anywhere in the residence. That's quiet. 
Are these room darkening shades? Yeah, so what we chose for the bedroom here is the room darkening material. Uh, it's great to keep the light out. Uh, so you can sleep in a little bit during the day if you need to. Uh, but for the rest of the residence, we went with the solar fabric. So you know, it lets the light in. I uh, get to enjoy the space a little bit better. Yeah, and the solar fabric will actually keep some of the hot sun out in the summertime. That's right, yeah. You can keep all that heat out. Uh, it saves some money on the electric bills as well. How big can you make them? Uh, we can go uh, custom sizes all the way up to 18 feet if someone wants them. Wow. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Hey, Richard. Hey there, how are you? A basement that we no longer have to duck under beams, which was not always the case down here. Right, there was the big chimney over here, the mechanical system was right here. And I gotta tell you, this building is beautiful. But if I don't see another mid-century modern again mechanically, you don't like them. Well, there's no attic, right? And now they want this is all a finished basement. So there's no logical place for the mechanical systems anywhere. Yeah. You know, we thought about putting the mechanical room here. Uh, we got radiant everywhere for heating, and we got air conditioning coming out through here, but no space. So that, right here, we thought about no exercise room. Yeah. Who? So laundry. laundry. Okay, and that's logical. It wants to be right here, close. All right, what about here? Well, this is electrical, so we can't. So we could maybe sneak in our air handler right here for the mini duct system. Yep. Okay. And so the regular trunk is like this, but now we got to get out and go underneath that beam. Right? There's a big steel beam right here. We took one out, but we put a new one up into the ceiling. Right. So we have to transition to as low as we can, because otherwise, if it was this low, look what would happen. Right. The door wouldn't have worked. So this allows us to provide air conditioning to that whole rest of the first floor. But not the heat, right? Because we need a right. boiler for the radiant. Right. So we still haven't found a place for the boiler. Follow me. To the garage. And this is where we cut through the original foundation. This is all new space in here. Right, so we see this wide open space and we go, perfect, mechanical room. And they say, no, no, we want to put a smart car here. A car and a half in a one car right. garage. So here it is. So oh, come on in here. Ducking again. Of course. So this is gr ground center for all the hydronic system. So it starts with a heating boiler right here, gas fired condensing boiler, big mass, super efficient, vented to outside. Now we take that water. We come along here, remember we have radiant with two different types of conditions. One is wood floors and one is tile floors. So here's our mixing valve for the wood floors with a super smart pump and a backup pump. And these will exercise back and forth every day. Okay. On the tile floors, another mixing valve, another smart pump right here. So now we've got the two different temperatures constantly changing to match every single room's got its own thermostat too. Very nice. We also come this way. We pipe to this heat exchanger right here where there's water on this side and there's antifreeze on the other, so for our snow melting system. So the water is making the antifreeze hot. That's, That's what's right. going outside. Right. And here's one of our radiant manifolds right here. These are strategically placed throughout the building, and you can see the supply and return with a, a shutoff a zone for every single room. Labeled, beautifully laid out. But there was no room for the hot water heater. <laughs> so we put that back, way yeah. back across the other side of the building, and piped to it. Everything is usually in one big room here. You had to split it out amongst three rooms. Right, and we had one more thing we had to deal with, which is we have a kitchen hood over the stove. By code, we have to bring fresh air in to replace the air that goes out through the hood. Mm -hmm. And for good measure, we added a heating element, too, because we live in a cold climate. Well, you did a good job hiding everything because the finished basement is beautiful, and Charlie, we even end up with a finished garage, which is beautiful. It's a beautiful garage, has a nice epoxy finish, with its own zona, radiant heat in the slab. Very nice. But one of my favorite things is the heated driveway. And the heated driveway is not just a luxury. We actually put it in for function because the driveway pitches back to the garage and we're worried about snow and all of a sudden some rain comes in, things melting. We right. don't want it to go into the garage. You also don't want the car sliding down an ice into the garage door. Right. You don't. And actually the heat is off of a sensor in the slab that senses temperature and moisture, so it only comes on when needed. Right. And then we put a strip drain at the end of the driveway, which drains into those tanks that Roger put into the ground. Yeah. So a lot of industry in this area, but a big improvement from where we were. No garage, used to be just a sea of asphalt. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Pretty cool. Now this was the old front door of the house, but now the new front door is over on that side of the building. We had a wall here that divided this space, and the stairway that led up to the living room is right here. That's right, and now with that wall gone, you know, the, the bedroom that was really small is a little bit bigger now, and, and uh, we'll, we'll probably use the space for watching TV and, and have a desk, like a small office right. here. Yeah. We also dug the floor down about eight inches, and that gave us room for radiant heat and insulation, and able to lower the floor to give about three inches of ceiling height, and that wall right there is the existing foundation wall to the That's house. Right. Yeah. 
And right here is a new location for the stair to get you upstairs from here. But remember the big fireplace and chimney that was here? That's right, it was big. It was big, a lot of work taking that out. Now because of the framing and the style of the house, we had to split up the utilities in four different locations. So more duct work here, radiant heat manifolds, and water lines right here also. Right, and this is the door that separates the guest suite from uh, the rest of the house. It's kind of a private area that could be closed off if needed. Right. Now, I know this area has its own bathroom and a nice little kitchenette here. Right, with a sink and a cooktop and, and a, a bunch of storage uh, uh, for the guests. Yeah, and use the same countertop material that we used upstairs. Right. As pull-out drawers, a wine cooler. Yeah. And right here is where we started our demo when we first right. did to yeah. see if, the wood floor, if it was a wood floor or a concrete floor. Yeah. Step down one step, and this is through the old foundation, so this is all new here. Yeah. has a nice high ceiling. Mm -hmm and a lot of windows, so it doesn't feel like a basement at all. Yeah. A lot of trees outside for privacy to block the street. Yeah, we've got windows on all three sides of the house and uh, uh, a private uh, exit uh, for the guests uh, so they, they can leave without entering the main house if, if they wanted to. Yeah, that's nice. So if your parents or your wife's exactly. parents want to stay, they have a place to stay. Beautiful concrete stairs with a nice landing and a walkway out to the street. Hey, Jen. Hey, Kevin. Looking good out here. Yeah, do you remember what it used to look like? Oh man, it was not much, right? I think it was a sort of just a pile of weeds right here, a little bit of poured concrete for a patio. Yep. This is a big improvement. There was no structure. And the great thing about this, this is all usable space now. Right. Um, and don't forget, this patio has permeable pavers down, so the water is going to go through and be captured. Okay. And then going over here, there's a city wall that runs along the whole perimeter, and extra seating is always great in a patio area. And then in phase two, they're going to put up a fence to give them a little bit of privacy. There's always multiple phases when it comes to landscaping. Absolutely. And another great thing, this is right off the dining room. So we're coming out to this entertainment patio, food, barbecue. It's just easy access. Love this new entryway. I know. Let me show you what else we have going on. Down here at the driveway, we're at the bottom of a slope. The water just comes ripping off this hill. Right. So we're working with the town to come up with a plan to manage that. So maybe a berm or a piece of stone for curbing right here just to deflect the water? Right, just to redirect it. All right, a little bit of work there, but oh, look at that, huh? <laughs> that is my favorite side of the house. That's the addition, screams mid-century modern. We've got the garage beneath, the balcony, the big overhang. It's beautiful. Love that, okay. And in the front yard, boy, this was a mess when we got here. We had all those invasives lining this wall, also mm -hmm. pushing the wall forward. Right. So Roger took the invasives off and out. Mark fixed the wall for mm -hmm. us, and now you've put some beautiful screening back. Yeah, so these are all arborvitaes, and it's just going to be one big hedge of green. So you get a green screen, a little privacy from the street, and cuts down on the noise from the cars. So these will fill in and basically become a solid wall? Exactly, and there's two different kinds of arborvitaes. This is a western arborvitae, and down there at the entry are uh, emerald green arborvitaes. A little bit more ornate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cold, but the sod is down, and that's going to come back beautifully green in the spring? This is going to be prolific green and right. just provide a nice clean space. You know, it's a tight city lot, but you did as much as you possibly could with it. Privacy green, beautiful. Nice job, Jen. It looks great. Doesn't it really? <laughs> Jen just showed me the outside and it is really coming together. It is awesome, yeah. Yeah, it's still phase one out there, but I think it's still looking good for that. Not phase one in here though, right? Phase complete. No, I think we're done here. Yeah. A little dining area here, um, just leading right into the patio that you just saw outside. Mm -hmm. um, nice good doors. This is the powder room. It's small, but it's nice to have it on the first floor. Yep, it'll do the trick. And it worked for us too. We stuck a ton of mechanical equipment up in that ceiling, including a uh, vent for the stove about 20 feet away. And Sunil, you got yourself a pantry. Yeah, no, we somehow snuck in a pantry in this modern house. It's, it's not that big, but still provides a lot of storage. So we're super excited about that. Mm -hmm. And here we have a big island. We've always wanted some seating in the kitchen. And we use the same porcelain-like thin material with a clean waterfall edge. So I think I really like that look. Crisp look. I like yeah, it too. Exactly. It's got three, three people who can sit um, uh, comfortably there. 
And this is our appliance garage. Our mixer, our blender are going to live in here. There's a nice countertop, and when we don't need them, they hide behind these cabinets. The uppers are high gloss. I love that. And the lowers have got that black matte finish. Yeah, and this is our dishwasher hiding behind this panel. Yep, so again, tuck it all away, right? Yep. That just blends right into the other cabinets. And look at the size of the sink, biggest yeah, I've seen. I, I love the sink. It's extra wide, and it has like multiple levels. It comes with multiple accessories that you can store at multiple levels, so it, it's great. I think I love Very it. Very clever, nice. Right, and here's the cooktop. So originally we were going to get just the fire or the gas burning one, but we loved the induction as well. So we got both and we had to get a matching wide hood above our it. Yep, and this is a custom unit and a little bit of an engineering challenge because the vent ductwork couldn't go through the roof of the building. It had to go 25 feet behind us. So that's the solution there. And here's the solution for the electrical outlets. You guys are thinking pop-ups maybe. Heath was able to find just enough room to put them up there. Right, I think that they look really good and I, I did not want pop-ups, so that's great. Awesome. And uh, here's a refrigerator column. So here's the freezer yep. uh, hiding behind that high gloss column. And that's what you wanted, hidden appliances. Yep. And so look at that, there's the fridge. Tons of space, plenty of room, but when it's closed, you'd never know it's there. So Maria and Samantha, you guys actually designed our kitchen for us. So thank you for that. And Eric and Carly, you guys did a lot of hard labor on this project. I hope it was a good experience. Yeah, it was a really good introduction for me. And I really enjoyed the summer and working with the best of the best and, you know, learning everything we did. It was great. Well, we enjoyed working with you and we wish you the best of luck for Generation Next and into the future. Thank Thanks. you. All right, and fellas, a mid-century modern, not an easy house to make, came with a lot of challenges, right, Charlie? Yeah, one of the challenges was uh, the interior trim. We had to install the interior doors before we actually could plaster it to them because the door frames were the finished trim. Right. And the other thing with the mid-century modern, the existing structure is light, so we added a lot of weight. We have to figure out ways to sister and strengthen the existing structure, hide beams into it so you don't see it. It can be a challenge. No problem at all for us. No attic, no basement. Eight levels, all glass, plenty of room to run stuff. Our mechanical team was awesome. Your team did a great job. A lot of people on this project did a fantastic job. Now it is your house. The whole family is here. Yeah. Your cousin Shruti coming in with your daughter Nisa. Yeah. Come on in, guys. Are you ready to take the house over and to move in? We are ready, yeah. There's a few small items remaining, but otherwise this looks so awesome. We can't wait. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure working with you guys. Good luck with the new house. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank and you that is a wrap for our 40th season here in Brookline, Massachusetts. But we are right on to season 41. Time for a wrap party. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor for all of us at this old house. What do you say, guys? Everyone ready for a party? Yeah.